Dallas Cowboys training camp is underway. Coach McCarthy, Jerry Jones giving their opening press conference and they talked about everything under the sun. <laughs> Coming off a 12 and 5 season, do you feel like this Cowboys training camp is the most pivotal you've been to? Uh, we always feel that way every year, the same <laughs> way that Jerry Jones always feels every year that this can be the year. Mm -hmm. uh, in the last eight years or so, uh, he's sung a little song and he said, I ain't got, I've turned it into a country song. He says, I ain't got time for a bad time. Yeah. Uh, and it of would course, be a great country song. It would. Thank you. I agree. I tried to write it one time. It didn't work out. But as he approaches what 80 years old, it yeah. starts to mean a little more that he ain't got time. Right. Uh, and, and I don't mean to be morbid about it. And so, you know, there's, there's that level of excitement. Of course, there's a, a, a buoyancy in every NFL training camp because yeah. you're, you, you're zero and zero. You got a chance to be 17 and oh, you haven't lost a game yet. Um, but there's certainly optimism. I do think it's important that Jerry came right out of the box. Uh, and before, by the way, acknowledging the passing of our friend Ted Nichols Payne, the great uh, and longtime engineer that we've worked with for so long, um, got right to the issue of Mike McCarthy yeah. uh, and, and made that job one today. Mike McCarthy's my coach. I have trust that he can lead us to a Super Bowl. He did and, say, and I had every option. And, and he pointed out, I have choices. Yeah. I, I, uh, I can, even though there's con years left on his contract, I can just could have still made a change. And then he said, uh, not only a Super Bowl this year, but Super Bowls in the future too. Now, after that, in the walk-off, you uh, had a chance mm -hmm. to bump into Jerry Jones yeah. and talk about not only Mike McCarthy and his job right. security, but another high profile staffer in Dan Quinn. Yeah, defensive coordinator Dan Quinn going into his second season with the Cowboys and his name was getting thrown around to a whole bunch of head coaching jobs because of the excellent job that he did last season with the Cowboys. And Jerry said, in the little, you, you won't catch it on camera, I don't think. No, but I don't think so. Jerry did say that he kind of was playing poker as far as putting Quinn's name up for being the head coach of the Cowboys, so that it might seem a little bit more of a difficult, daunting task for other teams to come in and try to snatch Dan Quinn away. Kind of a little game of poker, but we'll... Uh... And, and, or, or a game of revisionist history. Yeah. One or the other, because I, I do think there was... Um, a faith shaken as it relates to McCarthy. They they were stunned by how that thing went down mm -hmm. um, against the Niners. They were not only outplayed, they were out physical. Yeah. Um, and they were out physical, basically keyed by a wide receiver playing running back. You just can't let that happen. Yeah. And then in terms of discipline, yeah. um, that that was a nightmare. Uh, Fourteen penalties in that game. And Zach Martin and other guys have already addressed. We got we got to fix that. Mm -hmm. The discipline as it relates to the penalties yeah. uh, and some of that process starts right here in training camp. Yeah, McCarthy said that pre-snap penalties in particular are something that they will be working on throughout the next couple weeks. Of course, when it comes to all training camps, it look you have to look at the competitions at, on the roster and for the Cowboys roster, there's competitions all over the place, but none more important than in the trenches with the offensive line. Do you feel like that is the position group that has the most uncertainty right now? It's weird because I've got a future Hall of Famer at right guard and a future Hall of Famer at left tackle and yet yeah that's one of the areas yeah. that you, you, you want to get better at center uh, and you, it's not the glitz and glamour position that no. will catch the headlines but it is obviously one of the most important right it's a lot easier to talk about Dak Prescott and C.D. Lamb and Micah Parsons and yeah. there's a lot of that talk going on and we'll continue but but um, as we've talked about before you'd like to center play to be better and it's going to be one of these centers in camp so maybe they can get better and then the, the left guard play last year was not good enough and Tyler Smith the rookie is going to get a crack to fix that um, and then beat out Connor McGovern right. which would if that happens then you can look across your offensive line and say okay now we have a little bit of depth at least uh, along the interior line but that brings up the next problem I don't think they're in love with Josh Ball anymore uh, I, I think they've decided to maybe Matt will well, let's go. The six foot eight rookie mm -hmm. uh, that he's going to get first crack at swing tackle. Swing tackle is an important job, right. and, and if if for some reason one of these tackles goes down, Terrence Steele or uh, Tyron Smith, to say, okay, Matt Lewitz, well, let's go. <laughs> Uh, six foot eight and looks a little skinny at six foot eight kind of uh you're you're it's it's on you mm -hmm. that's asking a lot i wouldn't be surprised if this team explores the idea of acquiring over the course of this camp help at offensive tackle mm -hmm. i also wouldn't be surprised if they explore the idea of veteran help at wide receiver and will fuller is one of the names we mentioned i know that you're working on a project in regard to okay cd lamb yeah. and who cd lamb who? and what yes. yeah 
Yeah, and actually that's a perfect segue for me because one of the biggest competitions going on here at Cowboys Training Camp is at wide receiver. And of course, there's so much glitz and glam that goes around that. And C.D. Lamb is expected to have taken that huge jump into his next season. But when you look behind him, assuming that Michael Gallup doesn't play week one or maybe even up to week four, week five, we're not sure. Who does he have behind him, pushing him, um, and then to start next to him? And I, I think they give the job to Jalen Tolbert, the third round rookie. And hope that his sky's the limit, uh, don't know what my ceiling is approach, mm -hmm. that it pays off. You know, he's been a baseball player more than he's been a football player in yeah, his life. Yeah, so interesting. So he doesn't know how good he can be. We're going to start to find that out here this week. He looks the part. Absolutely. Uh, and, and he acts the part. And they're very impressed with his uh, mentality and physicality and all the rest. James Washington is on this list. Uh, the Oklahoma State winner of the uh, Fred Bolitnikoff Award when he was in college. If you're if you're the best receiver in college that year, then it ought to translate. It hasn't translated yet in his career as he's with the Steelers, never put up big numbers. He'll get a chance to be the number two guy. And then, of course, in the way this NFL works, probably maybe 75% of the time you're playing three wide receivers. So yeah. both of those two guys end up probably being starters to mm -hmm. start the year. And then we start worrying about the Simi Fajokos and that next level of guy. But first, they got to find somebody who's second behind CeeDee Lamb. Yeah. Another part that is very important of training camp is the injury updates. And Michael Gallup is the one that everyone's going to have his eye, their eye on. What's the latest on Gallup situation? Uh, they are going to do their conditioning stuff over the course of uh, time as we speak here. And very shortly, uh, and we'll get this to you as soon as we can, um, we're going to find out that they've moved Michael Gallup to Pup. We're going to find out that they've moved the rookie linebacker from LSU, Damone Clark, to Pup. He's the guy that had the spinal fusion surgery and found out just a month before, uh, I believe, the month before the draft, uh, something like that. Uh-oh, you got that issue. They found that out, by the way, at the scouting combine. It was, uh, coincidentally, the Cowboys doctors who were doing all the testing who found that in him. Uh, and, and broke the bad news to him. So he's probably not going to participate this year. Uh, there might be a couple other guys uh, who uh, are, are lesser lights, lower on the 90-man roster, yeah. who might have a little groin or a little hamstring or maybe in conditioning drills they did a little something. But the two big names that matter most, will, uh, I think, to Pup, will be Gallup and then Clark. And then as we look at quarterback Dak Prescott, he's entering this training camp healthy. Of course, last training camp suffering that shoulder injury. But he was one of the main reasons that Jerry Jones kept saying in his opening press conference, I'm confident this year we are better than last year because of Dak and because of the coaching staff in place. They're, what do you expect out of Dak this year? Yeah, their roster is not better yeah. as we stand here now. Now, in a moment, um, we're going to bring up the, the three guys that are gone, and, and we're going to... Uh, uh, pat ourselves on the back because Jerry Jones acknowledging at this press conference what we've been reporting for months on those three particular guys. But for the moment, you, you, you can't lose the quality of veterans that they lost uh, for, for whatever good reasons in your mind that you lost them. And right now, we're placing them with rookies who've never done anything and think we're going to be better. The Dak Prescott part of this, you're asking him to be better. Uh, in the first half of last season, he was an MVP candidate. So he's not going to be better than that. Uh, I would like him to be better than he was in the second half of the season, and that's part of good health. I do think this is notable, too, uh, and this got brought up. I think having Dak Prescott out here in training camp doing anything out of the ordinary, uh, um, anything that's not important, for instance, uh, practicing Hail Mary passes. Yeah. Well, why? Yeah. Uh, practice one of them. Yeah. That, that's for fun. A, yeah, for Make fun. sure you get it on video. And so you, you don't you you can't put him in mothballs. Yeah. You can't wrap him in uh, bubble wrap. Right. He's got to play football. But there's a time and a place for him to take even the smallest risk. And uh, the Oxnard practice field, I think the Cowboys have determined, is not that place. Yeah. Mike Fisher, you wrote a great article about Ezekiel Elliott and this perhaps being his quote-unquote last dance here in Oxnard. What are you hearing about Zeke? It's, it's just foolish to me to write off this guy. Uh, and, and we've reported because next March will be the first time that there's escapability from his big contract. And so I think they'll change his contract. I think he won't play under this same contract in 2023 for this team. But I've seen people say he could have a great year and they'll still cut. If, if he has a great year, that means he's still a great player. Yeah. Why do I want him? Why would I give him away? 